What's up guys, Ghost here and today I've got somewhat of a beginner's guide to starting off in Hardline. Quite a lot has changed for a player coming over from Battlefield 4 and if you're a newcomer to the series, well, you're going to find this even more informative. So I'd like to take this opportunity to help point you in the right direction, share some experiences, give some advice and help you avoid any unnecessary frustrations. So first of all, cash. Until you get some of this stored up, you're probably going to find one-on-one -on -one firefights comparable to having your face decked in. So get yourself into Hotwire and get doing the roundabout. This is a very easy and fast way of racking up points. Throwing an objective boost on wouldn't hurt either. These can be found by clicking the boost button along the top of the spawn screen. It may seem obvious to some, but apparently not to others who spent their first 10 levels hitting the escape key and thinking, where the sod are my boosts? <clears throat> Using the starting weapons in the Hardline can be an extremely jarring experience. Many of the starting weapons, such as uh, the RO-933, really just get devastated by some of the more damaging weapons out there, such as the AKM, or the ridiculously fast-firing ones like the K-10. My first experience of playing Hardline was a pretty terrifying one. I only got access to the game like around five days after most of the world did, yeah. So if you're just picking up Hardline now, you'll probably have a similar experience to me. I felt as though I was being outgunned in almost every situation. Um, the fact that weapons are unlocked in an unlinear fashion in Hardline means that everybody is going to be going for those quote-unquote OP weapons first. You may also feel naturally inclined to go with the Operator or Mechanic class, since they offer the only starting and arguably easiest to use automatic weapons. The Enforcer class starts you off with a pump action shotgun, which whilst powerful, pretty much leaves you with your pants down if you miss a shot or happen to be outranged. Similarly, the only starting weapon for the professional class is a bolt action sniper rifle, certainly not the easiest of weapons to use, least of all for a newcomer to the Battlefield series. But I'm here to personally tell you to not let that put you off these classes. I've been spending the most amount of time with the Enforcer so far, and I find it to be one of the best and most versatile classes in the game. I'd recommend spending your first thick wad of cash on getting the Scar H and the SA-58 unlocked for both factions. If you're familiar with weapons like the Scar H or Bulldog from Battlefield 4, then you'll feel right at home with these. It essentially feels like you're still playing that Scar H setup you had as an assault player in Battlefield 4, only better. For some god-awful reason, they start you off with a 3.5 times sight with the SA-58, which pretty much sends your peripheral vision into space with each shot leaving the barrel. Needless to say, I toss that aside in favour of the iron sight, which coincidentally is what you start off with on the scar. These weapons are definitely worth the grind though. Once you get the necessary 20 kills to purchase yourself a Cobra or other sight of your preference, it really is like going from night to day. I found that I went from getting my face smashed in to racking up the kills with relative ease. The class balance in Hardline has drastically changed things up. Battlefield veterans will be familiar with the Assault class, now called Operator, as the go-to class for most infantry situations, and the Engineer, now called Mechanic, as the favoured class on maps with lots of vehicles. In Hardline, however, I really don't feel like I have any less of an advantage as an Enforcer wielding a battle rifle even if faced with an assault rifle or a PDW. Another thing added to Hardline is the faded Doritos on your minimap. If an enemy is spotted but happens to be either above or below you, his minimap icon will now be faded. So no more running around corners to kill an enemy you thought was there, only to get hit by a UCAV. Speaking of UCAVs, there's none of them, which is good. An explosive spam has been heavily reduced overall. Grenades have seen some significant changes as well. The M67s seem to have a longer throw distance, explosive radius, and maximum damage. They feel much more akin to how they were in Battlefield 3 now. The backwards grenade used to toss up on hard to reach areas has made a comeback as well. You can also spray paint your emblem all over the place by pressing C, or some unknown button on console. I'm gonna guess this will become a classier form of teabagging. You also run slightly faster with your pistol out, so your secondary now has another use other than being your last ditch chance of staying alive. Laser trip mines. If you run up to them and hold R, you can disarm them instead of shooting them and drawing unnecessary attention to yourself. Did you know that gas grenades don't only affect your vision and hurt you, but also double your damage taken? 
combine one of these with a Molotov or Incendiary and your enemies will not be happy. And lastly, if you hit Z whilst in a vehicle, you can lean out of the window, putting yourself in harm's way, but allowing you to see and shoot 360 degrees around you. So there you go guys! A few tidbits on my preferred weapons and loadouts, and hopefully a thing or two you didn't already know. Thanks for watching, a rating down below would always be appreciated. Hope you enjoyed the vid, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.